ramp. Hi everybody! My name's Tamara, Facilities Director with Barrow Marine Life Center, if you don't already know who I am. And part of my job is taking care of the animals, making sure we have enough food for everybody. Uh, one of our fish in particular really only enjoys, or is really only willing to eat live shrimp. So we make sure we take out these, um, head out and check out and see what we can collect. So there is some live shrimp there. We have found that the boat docks are a good spot to go searching for them. So Tom puts in his net and gathers them up. I'm gonna grab my bucket. Here's my bucket. I'm gonna walk over to the other side of Tom and let you guys see. Oh, there is a little sculpin in there too. While we aim mostly for the shrimp, we do sometimes get other critters as well. So that looks like a, a tide pool sculpin. I don't know if you can see it kind of right, right there. Right there. And so what we're basically doing, and hopefully I won't drop my phone, <laughs> is with our net kind of gliding along all the algae here. And as we lift it up, we find if we've got any shrimp in our net. That. Can go ahead and dip again here. Yeah. Oh, good. Thanks, Tom. You can kind of see how. Go under the pier or under the dock and then come up through the seaweed. I didn't get anything that time. Nothing that time. So we're just going to be moving along, along the dock here, uh, seeing what we can collect and get, get some food for our critters. Then we kind of keep it in a bucket. I have a few things that help me out. So I've got a little net. Uh, we have a battery powered air pump um, that allows us to keep the water oxygenated if need be. I'm going to mostly let you guys kind of watch and explore Tom as he collects. Oh, that's a nice size little shrimp. There are lots and lots of shrimp in our waters. Uh, mostly what I notice us getting is like the grass shrimp. Sometimes, sometimes we get the broken back shrimp. Um, you mean to move your... Oh, nice. Hopefully you guys can see it with the glare and hopefully my signal is good enough for you guys to be able to see, but these are some feather duster tube worms and you'll notice that they'll, they'll get startled back into their tubes as Tom goes through. So all the pom poms have gone away. They'll come back out though. Maybe I'll wait to see who comes back out. The pom-poms uh, are basically their feeding tentacles. So it'll come back out and they use those tentacles to collect our plankton that's in the water. Oh, I think I see one emerging just slowly. You can see that kind of reddish. It's They're kind of a mix of black and red on their feeding tentacles or feeding cilia. No stinging cells or anything on, on these guys. They're just simply collecting the plankton as it goes by. And that's the, these are the Vancouver feather duster tube worms. There are definitely lots of different types. Nice. I don't know how well you guys can see through the water, but there's all sorts of fun shelters for critters to hide. Some plumose anemones, those kind of white, uh, if you can see them or not, um, white circles are, looks like they're closed anemones. I'll try to look around and see if I can find any open ones. Oh, my cord's getting stuck. So you can see that the feather duster tube worms have 
started to emerge more and more. Those pom-pom things are sticking out. They just got startled in when Tom ran his net across. I feel extremely smart convincing Tom to come with me so that it would be easier for me to record. Uh, you'll notice Tom is doing all the work and all I have to do is hold this phone. <laughs> <laughs> Shh, don't tell him. This was all my plan all along. <laughs> oh. He's bringing it back to his. I'll move the bucket back towards you so you don't have to walk so far. Okay. Now we got a few more. A few more little shrimps. Most of these around. look like grass shrimp. You'll notice um, in the bucket here, I'll let Tom add the shrimp in there and then I'll show you guys the bucket. A lot of these shrimp will have kind of a, a greenish hue or a brownish hue. Uh, that tells you uh, about what sort of algae they're living among. So they kind of take on whatever color the algae that they live in. So the greener ones probably spent more time with the sea lettuce or even with like eelgrass. Uh, the browner ones are definitely going to be spending more time with the kelps, the brown algaes. And then of course we have that really cool Tycosculpin. Hi John, it is a nice day for a walk on the pier. I'm just grateful that we were able to get out here. My, uh, our selfin sculpin, which is our fish that will only eat, sorry, I'm not paying attention to what I'm showing you guys as I'm walking. Um, our selfin sculpin will only eat the shrimp, live shrimp specifically. Uh, and he has been such a beggar lately that I feel like I've I've been suckered into giving him two or three shrimp a day. Gotta go grab my bucket. But uh, we're over in the off of Edis Hook the boat ramps out here. I'll give you guys a little I don't know 180 view. Got the mountains. Pharaoh Marine Life Center's over there. And of course the pilot boats. And the Coast Guard station just on the other side here. Alright, hopefully that was nice and slow so I didn't get anybody whiplash or anything. Let me know if you guys have questions, otherwise I'm going to just show you guys Tom working. <laughs> Tom, Tom says this is, this is fun, it's not work. I don't know if you guys can really hear him very well. There's definitely some really large um, plumos anemones down there, those big white blobs. Fortunately, I, I don't see a plumos anemone open. Uh, there's another plumos anemone there along with lots of beautiful kelp. I am a sucker for algae. I think they are just so pretty. I could look on the other side too. Oh, but this side has a lot of the, you can kind of really see the kind of mucus shine on the water. Um, as the algae decomposes, you get a lot of buildup here, particularly on this side of the ramp as the water tends to come from this direction in. And then as it reaches the, the boat ramp here, it gets stopped and so it sort of piles up on this side. Whereas on the other side, <laughs> um, the only stuff that's going to pile up over here is what goes around the boat ramp into this area. So that's why we're mostly trying to get our collecting from this side. Let me know if I end up you know, moving too fast or uh, being too bumpy. I'll do my best to kind of slow down. I am just hand holding here.
cluster of uh, oh. shrimp in this massive seaweed here mm. that uh, you can see in the bottom. Oh yeah, you can see all mm. the shrimp that was collected in this this algae or seaweed. And you can yeah, see can... how the color of the shrimp, um, hopefully you can see that, uh, the color of the shrimp really matches their algae extremely well. They are yeah. very good at that crypto coloring, as they say. Nice. Yeah. Those are Starting good to... sizes for our sail fin sculpin to enjoy. Yeah, just kind of coming alive with uh, the shrimp because we're out here about uh, well, two weeks ago or so and uh, didn't have this many. Uh, so it's kind of the, uh, the algae bloom and uh, you know, like Tamara was saying about the sea lettuce. And so it's. Uh, and then soon the uh, bull kelp will start uh, growing mm. now too. And the yeah. bull kelp. Okay. So, um, water temperature, the question is, does water temperature have anything to do with shrimp availability? Uh, yes, it definitely seems so. In the wintertime, um, as Tom was just mentioning, and hopefully you guys were able to hear him, we don't get to find a lot of shrimp in the winter. So it's uh, more so in the spring as the, ooh, that's a big one. I don't know if you guys can see that. There we go. It's a good size guy. That looks like one of the broken backs, maybe. Because hmm, of the angle um, of the uh, the, the back. Yeah. He's pretty big. Um, so yes, whether that's necessarily water temperature or, or uh, related to the plankton, uh, which somewhat is water temperature, but also a lot on sunshine hours, uh, could definitely be a a part of us finding the shrimp and how often do we collect the shrimp um, it kind of varies in the winter time in addition to not having as much shrimp out here um, a lot of our fish and this is definitely related to water temperature uh, their metabolism slow so our self and sculpin won't be nearly as hungry uh, so the shrimp that we collect will tend to last a bit longer um, so we may only go a couple, you know, once every few weeks, whereas come spring and summer when they're ooh, uh, much hungrier, uh, it kind of almost becomes a weekly trip. Um, so Tom found a little crab. Mm, Looks so like cool. a little shore crab. Here, I'll see if I can nice. be gentle. And... Oh, actually, this is really light. It, it might be a molt. It was, close, it was right close to the surface. Yep, it is a molt. I don't know if you guys can I'll see if I can kind of get this focused a bit. Um, so holding it, I kind of was like, it's really light. It's not moving at all. Um, and just by gently kind of lifting the back here, I was able to lift and separate this back from the body with really no effort. I didn't have to pull or pry, it just really lifts on its own. And you can see that it's empty. Um, so this is the molt, um, and it looked like a shore crab. It's got a nice flat body. Um, so this crab was likely still around unless it met its demise later, but uh, they, in order to grow, they have to get rid of their shell. And uh, yeah, John, they do start uh, young molting. In fact, they molt even their plankton stage. That's how they transform from the, the crab zoa um, to the megalops uh, and then to the settled crabs and then continue to grow. And when they're small and they're young, uh, they will molt more often. That's what's going to help them grow quite fast. Uh, when they molt, however, they are vulnerable. Uh, it takes some time for their new shell to harden. So when they first molt, uh, they are soft. So if you've ever heard of soft shell crabs, it's usually a common crab that gets eaten uh, in the east coast with the blue crab. They often do the soft shell crab. Um, soft shell refers to a crab that's recently molted. So it's nice and soft. Uh, it takes them a little while, they'll re-harden. And then uh, when they're ready to grow again, they'll have to molt. And so they have to crawl out of their hard shell, which is why there's an opening in the back, kind of lifts up and they are able to crawl out 
um, and they leave a lot behind. This one's really small, so it's hard to really show you guys all these uh, details here, but you can possibly, uh, there's like all this fluff right here. Those are the, its uh, gills. So it even leaves um, the outsides of his gills behind. Uh, sometimes you can even see on this one, he's it's really small, but you can see like the eyes. So like the outer shell of the eyes, everything gets left behind. It's pretty, pretty amazing. I think uh, we might have a YouTube video on Feral Marine Life Center's YouTube page of our heart crab molting. If we don't have that on there, I will be sure to get it on there. Um, it might take me a day or two to get it there, but I think it's already there. So you can check to see how they crawl out of their their hard shell. I'm gonna throw this molt uh, back into the water. That's a nice uh, source of calcium as it will dissolve and go back into the water. Be a nice source of calcium for the critters as they continue molting and growing. I'm gonna grab Tom's bucket here. Make it a little bit easier. My bucket's still right there. <laughs> if you can get past the grim on that side. Tom has decided to brave the uh, mucky side. Oh, a lot more, um, yeah, a lot more sea lettuce on this side, so you are more likely to find the green shrimp. In fact, I see a shrimp swimming right there, but I doubt you can see it on the phone here. I'll do a nice little walk to the end. It is definitely a lovely day. If you guys joined us last week, uh, it was a nice day when I went on Hollywood Beach. Um, and then I went back into Faro and I was you know, cleaning out the sand and doing things and then the sun came nice bright and warm and I'll, I kind of went, hey, where was this when I was on the beach? But I wasn't gonna complain because I didn't have rain, so happy, happy. Oh, perfect. There's that link for the Heart crab molting video for those of you interested in watching. Kind of doing a little peek down the water. Sometimes you can see different critters, like cra different crabs crawling about. The piling here that the boat ramp is attached to is covered with barnacles. And right now they're all closed up because they're out of the water. So you can kind of see where it almost looks like, um, where's it go? Okay, this is a bigger one, so you might be able to actually see it. There's sort of like the two shells that are joining together. That is part of the animal that lives inside of this shell. He creates this volcano shaped shell. And then as the water comes in, if we can get a good view of this or not but as the water comes in they will come out and eat oh of course I have sea lettuce in the way Whew. looking to see if any of those barnacles are opening up they kind of have little wispy legs that they stick out. I can see some with my eyes, but I don't think it's coming up on the uh, the camera phone. <laughs> I guess I'm a little surprised. I don't think I we usually do have the seagulls, the gulls coming up and poaching for food. Hey Tom, do you ever have gulls come and bother you while you're shrimping? Yeah. Yeah. They they've definitely have been here. And um 
over here you can see evidence of somebody getting something to eat a crab uh, looks like probably a, a red rock crab it had black claws and kind of a dark red color Ooh, that was stinky kind of wish I didn't touch that There's definitely some nice flocks of birds out here. People enjoying the sunshine. All right. Well, I think I'm going to be finishing up helping Tom collect the last bit of section of shrimp uh, getting those shrimp from the buckets back to Pharaoh and hopefully our self and Sculpin will be happy oh Tom's telling me we've got a flock of birds going by geese from the sound of it they're noisy like geese but they don't have the really long necks like geese, so I don't know what they are. Nice. Thanks, Tom. Making sure I didn't miss that. I don't know how to zoom. Oh, there we go. My zooming out function wasn't working super great. So are you checking barnacles out? Yeah. Oh, okay. I cooked out some of the barnacles over there. and. Well, if you guys have any other questions, uh, feel free to comment below. I'll make sure I check the post. Oh, how much shrimp do you gather? Um, about this much. <laughs> it, it definitely varies depending on what all we can get. Um, mostly we're collecting them for the self and sculpin. However, uh, because we put them in the tanks and there's other fish in there so especially like these little ones they'll get eaten, eaten up by the gunnels and the pricklebacks um, so we want to make sure we have enough for us to be able to collect still to feed the self and sculpin since he is the picky eater the gunnels and the pricklebacks will also eat our cut up herring and shrimp um, they're not nearly as picky uh, but the self and sculpin uh, he'll take the bite of the thawed food, but then spit it right back out. So in order to make sure that he does get his nutrition, uh, we need to make sure we have plenty of live shrimp for them. And so um, generally we, we kind of get this about some out, a uh, bucket full. Um, and try to have this, you know, every other week or every week, depending on how quickly the, the shrimp are getting eaten up. But good question. Cool. And if you guys have other questions, uh, you can comment below. I will definitely check the posts out. So thanks, you guys. Um, I think our next planned Facebook Live uh, is on Sunday, Easter Sunday. We'll be feeding the anemones um, before I go. Oh my gosh. I don't know if I can s show it to you guys. I see a little jelly. It's mostly clear, so it's going to be hard to show you. I'm going to try to zoom in and find it again. Sorry for the wobbliness. I'm on super zoomed in and I'm trying to find the jelly to show you guys. I'm not even sure if it'll show up on the camera uh, I don't think it will um, anyway it looked like a some type of maybe a cross jelly super super small uh, but happened to see it so I was hoping to be able to show it to you guys unfortunately I can't get can't get it to show up and 
being so far zoomed in is not helpful. <laughs> uh, oh. Oh, nice. So it's right there. If you guys can kind of see, and you'll see it pulse every once in a while. Of course, now that I'm pointing at it, it's not pulsing. A little jelly? Yeah, a little jelly. Uh, and then... Oh, yay! This is um, a kelp isopod. It has oh, a very uh, similar tail shape of <laughs> a shrimp, but hopefully you'll... I don't know, the sunshine is getting a little... There. Oh, oh, right, maybe right there. It's a, a different kind of shape. But I've never actually tried feeding isopods to the self and sculpin, so that would be interesting to experiment with. Sure. All right. Now, really, I'm going to sign off and I'll keep track on um, posts and things. So if you have questions, put them down. Thanks, you guys, for watching and hope you guys are having a great day. Stay, stay safe, stay healthy.